Saudi Arabia's great plan to turn seawater into fresh water. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman issued a video in January 2021 stating huge plans for the future. It was a major presentation that seemed all very familiar, like the late Steve Jobs introducing a new age of smartphones. iPhone. However, instead of massive technology, it's all about future urban growth and utopian nation building. The plans are big. A 170-kilometer-long linear metropolis with no roads, automobiles, or pollution. Over a million people would be housed in the so-called civilization revolution. But there is one crucial aspect that was left out of the speech. A metropolis of its size requires a lot of water. And we're talking about one of the world's driest places. Water shortage is all too common in the Middle East. In fact, while a worldwide water crisis is coming over many countries, this region is one of the most affected areas. Population increase and environmental consequences have created a situation of growing demands for an increasingly limited resource. To counteract the negative impacts, governments in the area have mostly turned to a costly and controversial measure, desalination. Saudi Arabia and UAE they produce the premise of man-made desalination is easy. You pull water out of the ocean, separate it from the salt, and send the fresh water wherever it is required, mostly for human consumption or agriculture. Until now, there have been two primary methods for accomplishing this. Thermal desalination is the older process, which involves heating salt water and then cooling the vapor to produce fresh water. The other, more complex and market-dominant technology is reverse osmosis. Salt water is pumped through a semi-permeable membrane under high pressure. Thermal desalination often consumes more energy than reverse osmosis membrane systems. Both solutions, however, come at a high cost, both economically and environmentally. The economic expenses are a result of the high energy needs of desalination, which have been connected to a worldwide environmental cost depending on how the energy was produced. In the Middle East, the term mostly refers to fossil fuels. Desalination facilities emit a total of 76 million tons of CO2 each year, a number that is predicted to be nearly three times higher by 2040. On a local level, the major concern is hypersaline brine, a result of desalination. The brine is frequently sent back into the ocean after being extracted. Because it is considerably denser than salt water, it settles to the bottom, where it may harm ecosystems by increasing salt content and lowering oxygen levels. All of this implies that governments have generally used desalination when no other options are available. Egypt, for example, is investing heavily in developing its desalination business and respond to rapid population growth and increased concerns about Nile droughts. Desalination is intended to alleviate tensions with upstream Ethiopia over the enormous GERD dam project, as well as to fill a gap that currently exists. Drought and overpumping have driven the biblical Sea of Galilee to an all-time low in Israel. The Inland Sea is Israel's largest freshwater reservoir, and its current low level is limiting the downstream River Jordan and the Dead Sea water. The solution, according to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet, is desalination. The plan is to simply replenish desalinated water from the Mediterranean into the Sea of Galilee. Desalinization is expanding. Since the early 2000s, the number of saltwater desalinization facilities in operation has more than doubled. This method now provides water to over 300 million people worldwide. A total of 173 nations have desalinization facilities. But Saudi Arabia is unquestionably the leader of the pack, being by far the biggest of the few countries in the world without a single river. Desalinization plants are abundantly planted along its beaches. They generate more fresh water than any other country, one-fifth of the global total. The world's largest desalinization plant Al Jubail generates more than 1.4 million cubic meters of water each day and supplies fresh water to the country's capital. With very little fresh water at its disposal, yet awash in oil money, Saudi Arabia uses fossil fuels to generate the vast amount of electricity needed. 
The government must also deal with massive volumes of garbage generated by this energy-intensive business. But this is all meant to change. NEOM is Saudi Arabia's ambitious flagship giga project, a $500 billion investment in a nation inside a country in the sparsely populated Northwest, along the Red Sea coast. Sustainability and environmental responsibility are two of its key concepts. But what's the substance behind these witty catchphrases when it comes to meeting the enormous demand for a limited resource like fresh water in the desert? The solution is supposed to be an innovative technology that looks like this. A sphere created by a glass and steel dome rising 25 meters into the air and covering a cauldron of about the same size. The so-called Solar Dome was created by the UK-based company Solar Water in collaboration with Cranfield University. The logic behind it is actually pretty simple. Seawater is transported through a glass-enclosed aqueduct system, which provides sunlight to the water as it travels into the dome. The solar radiation is focused onto the dome by a system of parabolic mirrors. This heated the salt water in the cauldron, causing it to evaporate. As a result, highly pressurized steam is produced and condenses as fresh water, which is subsequently pumped to reservoirs and irrigation canals. The solar dome is designed to create 30,000 cubic meters per hour at a cost of 34 cents per cubic meter. Everything is completely carbon neutral. However, there is still the problem of the hypersaline brine. According to reports, the desalinization process in NEOM minimizes the total quantity of salt produced during water extraction, hence assisting in preventing damage to marine life by not dumping any brine into the sea. However, the question of what happens to the concentrated brine remains unsolved. Solar Water claims that it can be extracted and commercially marketed. The brine includes chemicals that can be used in a variety of industrial operations. It needs to be seen whether this truly works and whether the idea to develop an economically viable extraction of resources for other sectors will be successful. The first solar dome is now being built and will be tested on a large scale. The NEOM Solar Desalinization Project will serve as a model for other water-stressed countries seeking ecologically safe and long-term supplies of fresh water. The ambition of solar water is bold carbon-neutral agriculture and reforestation in the middle of the desert. It's difficult to determine how much of this vision will come true. NEOM will undoubtedly put it to the test, with the first solar dome desalinization facility set to open in 2021. Despite its flaws, desalinization is here to stay. The business will continue to flourish as it becomes more affordable and water shortages become more of a problem, and nations like the Middle East will be completely reliant on it. It really is up to all of us to manage the precious resource of fresh water in a responsible and sustainable manner. And it is up to research and innovation to find the most environmentally friendly and least destructive method to provide it. What's your opinion on desalinization? Do you think it will put an end to the global water crisis? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks for sticking till the end.